Hello dear students. Welcome back to your science class. Today I am going to continue with the chapter heat. In our previous lesson we have learned about definition and unit of heat. Definition of temperature. Measurement of temperature by using different temperature scales. Types of thermometer and their properties. Interconversion between temperature scales. We will start our today's class from where we have finished the last day. That is interconversion between temperature scales. We have learned about the relationship between Celsius and Fahrenheit scale in our last class. Today we are going to do a few numericals that will prove this relationship between Celsius and Fahrenheit scale. So let's start our today's class. So let's start this interconversion between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Question is 120 degree Celsius equal to what degree Fahrenheit? We know from the formula F equal to 9C by 5 plus 32. So now we are putting C equal to 120 degree. Now rest is simplification. Nothing else. 9 into 120 by 5 equal to 24 plus 32 equal to 248. So 120 degree Celsius equal to 248 degree Fahrenheit. As simple as that. The numericals are. We will do two more. Given is 160 degree Fahrenheit equal to what degree Celsius? Formula is C equal to 5 by 9 into F minus 32. We are putting instead of F 167 as it is given. Now simplification and 75 is the result. So 167 degree Fahrenheit equal to 75 degree Celsius. Another interesting one. At what temperature Celsius and Fahrenheit will be equal? Let the temperature be X. Simply we are writing the formula first. F equal to 9X by 5 plus 32. Right? At what temperature Celsius and Fahrenheit both will be equal? So in place of F also we can write X. Right? So now we are doing simplification. We have taken this 32 this side. So it turn it is equal to x minus 32 is equal to 9x by 5. 5x minus 160 equal to 9x. Because this 5 will be multiplied here. This 5 will be multiplied here. 5x minus 160 equal to 9x. Now, if this 9 is going this side or 5 is coming this side, 4x equal to minus 160 and hence x is equal to minus 40. That means at minus 40 degree temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit both is equal. That means minus 40 degree Celsius equal to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit. Transfer of heat. From here we will start our today's lesson. Heat is transferred by conduction, convection, radiation. We will learn about these three processes in detail. Conduction. What it is? Heat conduction or thermal conduction is the movement of heat from one object to another one that has different temperature when they are touching each other. Every uh, point is important here. Heat conduction or thermal conduction is the movement of heat from one object to another that has a different temperature. Temperature should be different otherwise we will not understand that thermal conduction is happening. When they are touching each other that means they should be in contact to each other for conduction to take place. Next. Conduct conditions necessary for conduction. The object should be in solid state. Only in case of solid conduction occurs. Two objects must be in contact with each other. 
two objects must be in different temperature while reading definition we have just discussed about this so these are the three most important conditions that are necessary for conduction to take place object should be solid in state must be in contact with each other and must be of different temperature now why conduction is possible only in case of solid here is one example see molecules of solid you all know you have read it in class 6 that molecules of solids are tightly packed there is no intermolecular space so molecules of solid cannot leave their space and move freely so whenever temperature is given the molecule that is near by heat they first become hot energy increases because you know heat is a form of energy and then they deliver the energy to the nearby molecule they deliver it to the nearby molecule they deliver it to nearby molecule like this way conduction of heat will take place from this side towards that side this is how conduction take place because molecules are not able to leave their place as because they are tightly packed with each other now question may arise in your mind ki all solids are able to do conduction answer is no whether they are able to do conduction or not on the basis of that we have divided solid into two group conductors and insulators conductors are material that permit heat to flow freely from particle to particle within them on the other hand in contrast to conductors insulators are materials that prevent free flow of heat through them so here we have given a few common example of insulator and conductor most metals are good conductor of heat and insulator like wood toothpick cardboard rubber band these are the examples of insulator okay so this is the example of conductor and insulator pencil is kept here pencil is kept here in between this is in case of electrical conductor and insulator because you know for electricity also conductors and insulators are there pencil the wooden structure of the pencil is definitely insulator of electricity but inside there is a graphite neve that is the conductor of electricity so this is present in the overlapping zone between conductor and insulator let's do an activity what we are doing taken a copper or aluminium rod fix a few wax pieces at an equal distance yeah we have done this clamp the rod to a stand yeah clamp the rod to a stand the wax pieces begin to melt and fall down from the heated end once we started heating we will see that one by one wax pieces are fallen down why is this happening because transfer of heat conduction of heat will starts from this end and slowly move towards that end as i have just shown you that molecule how they transfer energy during the process of conduction here is another one same kind of experiment you see that the wax balls are fallen down slowly one by one as the conduction is taking place so we are seeing here that heat is transferred from the hotter end to the colder end by conduction next process of heat transfer is convection here you can see one convection current is shown that hotter air rises up and colder air sinks and coming down this is the convection current what is set up Convection is the process by which heat is transferred in liquid and gases. Conduction for solid. Convection is the process by which heat is transferred in liquid and gases from the hotter part to the colder part. The transfer of energy in liquid or gas. This is convection. When part of a gas or liquid is heated, the particles it is made up of moves faster and spread out. The moving particle bump into other particles, causing them to move faster and spread out. Here we have to keep it in mind. We are talking about convection that is takes place in liquid and gases. Liquid and gases, the molecules are not so um, intermolecular uh, attraction is not so strong, and intermolecular spaces are much bigger. in comparison with solids so molecules are able to freely move 
once heat is supplied they move very freely and make other molecules to move in this way heat is transferred through the setup of convection current let's do another activity take some water in a round bottom flask or you can take any container keep it on a tripod stand put a crystal of potassium permanganate potassium permanganate we are taking so that we can see the convection current because it is a colored compound so we can see a color fountain formed there otherwise if we do not take potassium permanganate then also convection will take place heat it with a burner the water at the bottom becomes hot and rises up and cold water from the top moves down this water becomes hot and rises up and cold water from the top moves down and the process continues till all the water gets heated this shows that heat is transferred by convection okay so if you take a look at the picture see hot water that is rises up and cooler water sinks again it comes here becomes hot rises up cooler water sinks and comes to the bottom this way it continues until and unless entire water's temperature become equal convection in air as liquid air also shows convection current the air near the heat source gets heated and rise up the air from the sides move into to take its place in this way the air gets heated if you keep one hand above the flame and one hand on the other side of the flame the hand at the top feels hot because the air above is heated by convection the hand at the side does not feel as hot because there is no convection it will feel hot because of the third process that is radiation but immediately the hand that is above the burner will feel hot because convection current will set up so this is one practical uh, phenomena that we can see because of the convection current what it is sea breeze during the day the land gets heated faster than the sea so the air above the land gets heated become hotter and rises up cool air from the sea moves towards the land this is sea breeze so the air that is coming from the sea is sea breeze the air that is coming from the land is land breeze we will remember this air that is coming from the sea is sea breeze air that is coming from the land is land breeze so sea breeze we can see during the day time because during the day time the land get warmer the air surrounding the land get hotter go up and from the sea cold air comes towards the land opposite happens in case of land breeze you can see it has happened during the night time during the night sea cools down slowly and land reflects heat faster okay so it cools down faster so hot air above the sea now rises up and cold air from the land is coming towards the sea and it is land breeze i told you that wind that comes from the sea is sea breeze wind that comes from the land is land breeze third process is radiation radiation is the process by which heat is transferred from one place to another without the help of any medium that is important here it is different from other process because conduction we need solid convection we need liquid or gas but radiation do not require any medium the heat from the sun reaches the earth by radiation there is a huge vacuum place between the sun and the earth and we get the sunlight only because of radiation because no air is there in much uh, bigger spaces between the sun and earth when we sit near a fire we feel warm due to heat radiated by the fire all hot bodies radiate heat if you keep anything hot it radiates it heat become uh, cooler and reach to the surrounding temperature some practical applications now these are interesting to know dark colored surfaces absorb more heat than light colored surfaces 
We can prove this by a simple experiment. If we take two tin cans of the same size and paint the outer surface of one with black and one with white. Pour equal amount of water in each and leave them in sunlight for about an hour. Measure the temperature of water in both the cans. What we will see? We will see the one which is painted with the black, the water get hotter there. Okay. On the contrary, dark colored surface radiate more heat than light colored surface. They absorb also faster, radiate also faster. Yeah. So, we can again prove this. Take two tin cans of the same size. Paint the outer surface of one with black and white. Pour equal amount of hot water of the same temperature. Say 60 degrees Celsius we have taken. Leave them in a room or shade for 10 to 15 minutes. Again if we measure the temperature we will see that the container which is colored black. The water inside there become cooler faster. So, taking that knowledge about the dark color that absorb more heat and radiate also faster, right? We wear dark colored clothes in winter because it absorb more heat and keep us warm. We wear light colored clothes in summer because it reflect most heat and keep us cool. It absorb less also. We wear woolen clothes in the winter because wool is a poor conductor of heat. And the air between the wool fibers, there is a much air spaces, right? That prevent loss of heat from our body cue because air is a bad conductor of heat, right? So, air inside the wools prevent loss of heat from our body. So, we feel warm. I hope your conception of the chapter heat is clear now. If you have missed the first class, please see in the description box where the link of the first class is given. Please watch it and then watch this video to get a clear idea of the chapter heat. Thank you.